full of blood, out the saddle, in the drops, sprinting to try and hold Lance's wheel. Lance is sprinting like an NFL linebacker, sprinting to a 19-year-old cheerleader's house before her dad gets home. So what is your normal hemoglobin? Like, like what is it today? It's low. Well, you know, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, since we live in Aspen now, I'm sure it's, it's, it's probably 45 or 46. But, you know, if I lived here in Austin, it, it would be in the low 40s. And so do you remember when you started doing EPO in 95? Presumably they gave you enough EPO to bring your hematocrit up to 50, I would guess, is where they kind of wanted you? Well, there was 50 was not. Um, <laughs> I know that there was no ceiling. Right. But did they have concern about blood clotting and things like that? Um, not at 50. And maybe not even at 60. There are people on Everest that, you know, better yep. than me that have a, a hematocrit of 70. Why they were pushing your crit back in 95? Not specific, I mean, not that. It, it, it was, uh, the answer is no, but I mean, it would. It, I would remember if it had been 60, or, yeah. you know, sort of the stories you hear from, from uh, some folks. But And, and also just, um, you know, enough is enough, right? At some point, you're, you're, you're competitive, you're at the front of the, you, know, you, well, you need to do more. That's a great interview there. Go check it out. It's on Peter Atiyah's channel. Peter Atiyah, I'm a harsh critic of, and he's, he thinks ketosis is the best thing for athletes, best thing for anyone. You know, he's got Lance Armstrong, the greatest, you know, racing cyclist ever in terms of building the sport into mainstream. He's got Lance Armstrong sitting there who's sugared out of his head, and Peter Atiyah still says ketosis is best for athletes. And it's like, how can you train at 400 watts, 6 watts per kilo, 700 watts per kilo, if you're in keto, you can't. You need sugar. All right, let's cut to Lance Armstrong. And this is Hortecam stage 2002. I remember watching this on SBS 22 years ago. This stage is almost as old as Natasha, my girlfriend. Look at Lance, mate. Just the alpha in the pack, Pantani on his wheel, Zula, the Swiss, juiced to the gills. Even the motorbikes going, damn, get out of the way, Saker Rod. Right? <laughs> Look at these guys. Remember, everyone on this stage is on the EPO. Everyone here. Everyone is juiced out of their head. Lance Armstrong's just the most, like, Lance is just the boss, man. He is the boat. No, sorry, he's not the boat. These guys are the boats. Lance Armstrong's the tide. He raises all the boats, man. Lance Armstrong is the tide that rises all the boats. Look at Pantani. Look at that cadence. Pantani's maxing out the cadence to try and hold the wheel. And Lance is a good 16 kilos heavier. Even his, you know, Pantani's pushing so hard. He's got his cheeks and his pink lycra just pumped, full of glycogen, full of blood. Out the saddle, in the drops, sprinting to try and hold Lance's wheel. Lance is sprinting like an NFL linebacker sprinting to a 19-year-old cheerleader's house before her dad gets home, all right? Lance is on the rampage, man, the Horta cam. They said 99 was a fluke. You won't win again, boy. And he's like, yeah? Come at me, bro. Come at me. Look at that Pantani. He's got the motorbike, the number one camera is on Pantani and Lance. Pantani's about to lose pole position camera, he's looking back, he's like, damn, this is embarrassing, I am Pantani, I am the pirate, the motorbike is breaking contact, number one camera, camera number two's coming up alongside, Pantani knows, if camera number one goes away, it's game over, alright, Lance is going to get the double-handed schlobby gobs from the podium girls tonight, only number one cameraman Gets that sort of pro, uh, that sort of status. Look at that. The flash is popping, man. Chicks don't want to deep throat guys who aren't getting flashes. You know, they don't they don't want to get deep throat second place, second on GC. It's winner takes all, man. Winner, look at Lance. Look at him. Clear lens Oakleys. The 2000 US Postal team kit on there. Absolutely classic. Pantani's riding so hard he's got his pink jersey from the Giro win in '98 still on. Veronk at the back. Willie Vaway. Got the vacuum cleaner full of EPO, the Pulte vacuum cleaner. 
Who else we've got in this bunch here? We've got S. Cartin all over that Kel, mate. We've got Tonkov there on the Russian good shit. You know, looks like Santiago Batero, maybe. One of the October brothers is up the road and attack. He's going to stay up. He's going to win the stage. But Lance is going to pull a second there. And going to put minutes into everybody. Look at that, man. Out the saddle, just running, sprinting up the climb. He's probably doing... He's, he's probably doing close to what Phil Guimond does up Norton Summer on Strava. Literally. They both put out the same watts per kilo. The only difference is <laughs> Lance admits he's on gear. Phil doesn't. You know? There's only one way to do these watts per kilo. There's only one way to do these watts per kilo. Whether it's on Strava for a 10-minute climb, 30-minute climb, or it's in the Tour de France after your team has just pulled on the front and blocked you the wind all day. There's only one way you can ride this fast, or run that fast, or swim that fast, and that is, my friends, is with oxygen vector products that boost your hemoglobin, whether it's blood boosting, synthetic hemoglobin, erythropoietin, whatever it takes. All right, this is like is that Santiago Patero, maybe. Look at that! Just look, look, look at he's sprinting. He's sprinting. Remember that time Cookie Man dropped me up Norton Summit? That's me in the coma, sprinting to hold the wheel. And Cookie Man and Lance just riding away. That, that right there is hyper responder to the EPO. Hyper sugar in the muscles. He's got cortisol running through his blood right now. You've got to have... This is what you got to have, basically. This is a cocktail. You've got to have the sugar, the muscle glycogen. You've got to have the water, all right? You've got the muscle contraction, hydration, blood blood thinness, etc. You need the EPO for high hemoglobin, okay? You need the cortisone, the can of court, for that high cortisol, Superman euphoria feel, all right? Lance Armstrong's cortisol is through the roof right now, all right? These guys here, look at that low cortisol. I mean, they probably cortisone themselves out too much a bit, but look at that. Lance Armstrong's vibe is totally different. People are like, oh, he's on an e-bike. He's on an e-bike. He's on an e-bike. You know what I mean? I've been riding e-bikes for seven years now, six years now, all right? This is an e-bike. This is real deal. This is real deal. Cortisone, hemoglobin boosters, and Lance Armstrong's alpha. Looks like Kivalev is going to pull a few turns for him, I think. You know? Look at Lance, man. Like, these guys knew that Lance makes everyone famous. If you're a rival, we only know the names of these riders because they were in the Lance era. And they were, they were riding with Lance, against Lance sometimes, you know. There's positive, you know, this is, this is war on the hill. This is awesome. You know, Lance Armstrong made Trek. He made Shimano what they are today. You know, this is a Trek 5900. You probably pick up one of these for about a grand these days. Or oh, Jimenez. Jimenez is on the wheel. Jimenez. Another suicide uh, case a few months later after this. You know, unfortunate. But Jimenez, the pure climber, just not knowing what's going on here. What's going on? Lance just had the, the wheel. Lance is just the alpha. Lance is the guy in the bunch who grabs the driver out of the car and gives him a headbutt when everyone else is like you drove a bit close to us lance is that guy kicking the car doors man that's lance all right and so when he's got the same you know red blood cell count as the other guys he's not using any excuses i'm a bit heavier than everyone else he's like i don't care i'm gonna win this thing we're gonna put it all on the line all on the line yeah, this is like look at, look at the jersey as well. You know that loose fit, super comfortable. You know, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I remember this this kit was so popular. People used to ride around Adelaide wearing this kit. These bikes. A couple of guys had these bikes in Adelaide. Maybe four of those in Adelaide. They were about eleven thousand dollars back then. I've got one uh, in a different colorway. You know, same group set, and he's got the serums on there, singles, tubulars. But look at that. Lance is uh, absolutely on the limit now. Jimenez just trying to hold the wheel. All right, this is not e-bike. This is real deal. All those idiots out there who've never ridden an e-bike, or never even used a power meter, or never even used uh, my hem. I've, I've pushed my hem hemoglobin up to 58. My sorry, my hematic at 58. I pushed my hemoglobin up to 187. You know, th there's certain things that you just. I've got the same Pinarello here in yellow. There's just certain things that you can just spot on riders who are enhanced. Lance Armstrong's testosterone in this would be pretty low. I'd say low normal. Because if your testosterone is too high, your muscles stiffen up. That's what I notice when I haven't used any testosterone for like at least two or three weeks. I lose weight. Because you know, the higher your testosterone is, the higher your weight is relative to you. 
and your legs, they sort of, they just get stiff with water retention, muscle retention. And so when you don't use testosterone for at least two or three weeks, or maybe just a, you know, a little cap or something like that, but no injections for two or three weeks, your legs just become lighter and you hold less muscle on your leg and you can spin the pedals even better. So you can sort of see the, the suppress of Jimenez, Jimenez's pedaling is really, really good. But Lance Armstrong, look at this. This is Otto at the front, really running out of sugar here. But you can sort of see Lance's legs. Lance's legs are just so snappy, aren't they? They're just so snappy. High cortisol, high red blood cell, low fluid retention, low edema, like vascularity. Va You've got to have vascular legs. When your legs are vascular, that's when they're really spinning the best. As a man. Women don't and shouldn't have vascular legs. That means your estrogen is too low. But, uh, you know, you can just see Jimenez out the saddle on the river. It looks like Tonkov in the back there. Maybe Beltran. You know, just, yeah, the, the epic days, mate. The good old days. This was when fans were naive to how professional sport goes. And today fans are still relatively naive. But if you're from Slovenia, they might target you. But if you're from, you know, France, you're okay. The reality is, kids, everyone at the top, every sport is on the good shit. That's just how it is, man. It's pro sport. You paid to win, all right? You paid to win. You paid to win. Your job is to perform, okay? Don't be surprised when people take stuff to do their job better. <laughs> Don't be surprised, man. You know, you wouldn't care if the surgeon putting your legs back on was full of Adderall and testosterone to do their job, would you? You know, you wouldn't care, all right? So let's not be hypocrites and judge professional athletes for doing whatever it takes. We can critique social media influencers who are lying about steroid usage and selling kids programs, and those kids think they'll be swole like the influencers on social media one day, Natty. We can critique those people. Those people are frauds. But people like Lance Armstrong, Pantani, etc. Michael Phelps, Michael Jordan, they're all on the gear. They're all on the gear. And they're just entertainment, you know. They're here by big money. Big money put them here, and big money's making big money off them. All right, that's all it is. It's big money making more money and using these people as pawns. If they get caught, big money cuts them. Big money cancels them. Cuts them from the, 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 the pay nipple. Which is unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Lance Armstrong brought joy to many. He still does today. You know, he was a young lad. Abandoned by his dad. And had something to prove to the world. So when people fought against Lance. Are you surprised he fought back hard? Of course not. You shouldn't be. If you're surprised that Lance would fight back. Then. <laughs> you'd probably think Michael Phelps is clean. You know, it's hilarious. What a day, man. This was day was epic in the wet. It was like a six-hour stage. Now, remember, back then, they raced the races pretty chill. You know, like it wasn't full gas. So, and you can tell because the breakaway's up the road, all right? The breakaway's up the road. And you can tell they didn't go full gas because how fast they did the last climb, okay? The guys like Lance, the GC group. So that's when you compare Phil Guimond, Cookie Man, to Lance Armstrong and you know that Cookie Man is doing around about the same time as a retired athlete that Lance is doing you know so people think oh they're racing six they're not racing for six hours there's a breaker up the road Lance is sitting in the back you know comparing stories of podium girls with other dudes you know and he's in the wheels with teammates Lance is not going back to the cars getting bottles and jackets and f you know, he's got his team for that they're blocking the wind Lance doesn't even see the wind Lance controls the pace of the race, okay? People respect that, and that's just how it is. When, you, when, you, when, you, when you're the champion, man, you set the rules. So people think, oh, six hours of racing, he's flying. No, no, it's not six hours of racing. They were just dawdling along. And then the last climb is Action Jackson, okay? And the proof of that is the breakaway up the road of relatively unknown riders. Riders who became famous because of Lance Armstrong. When you win the stage and Lance is second you get fame, okay, that's how it is, that's why Lance Armstrong is the tide that rises all the boats, look at that man, look at the, 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 the drive of Lance, look at that cadence man, Dr. Ferrari in the house, you know, that's why all my girlfriends get so good so quick, I use Dr. Ferrari's principles, we jack up their hemoglobin, we jack up their cadence, we jack up their sugar, we jack up their water, we, we decrease their fat intake, 
and we strip fat off their bodies. Some of them need more than less, more than, more, more fat stripping than others. Last kilometer, the Flam Rouge. Look at that. Yeah, just impeccable cadence. Just drive, man. He is getting it done, man. Getting it done. Drugs or no drugs. You know? You took all the you take away all the drugs, Lance's still gonna win. Because it's Lance, man. It's Lance fucking Armstrong. The fighter, mate. You know? Imagine if Lance was a UFC fighter. <laughs> He'd probably kill people in the octagon. That's just Lance Armstrong, man. Alright, so he did well for the sport. You can talk trash about him, but you can be a hater, but man, you gotta admit that Lance made the sport is what it is today. If he didn't juice, we wouldn't have the sport as good as it is today. And it would have been if Lance didn't take gear, he would have finished down the back and some other juicer would have won it. Alex Zula might have won, you know? And Alex Zula and that they don't have the same flair and panache as Lance has. Lance made cycling international. No doubt about it. No one is like Lance. You know, that impact is just here forever. Now we have a new champion today, Pojikar. He is an absolute phenom, isn't he? 